Are you planning to conduct a systematic literature review and you want to follow the PRISMA protocol for this? Well, it's easier than you think. In this video, I'll explain what PRISMA is and show you exactly how you can apply it in your own lit review. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. PRISMA stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. It's a guideline developed to improve the process and reporting of systematic reviews and meta-analyses. These literature-based studies are particularly valuable because they summarize the findings of many individual studies, providing a more comprehensive picture of a certain topic. The PRISMA guidelines offer a standardized framework that ensures all important aspects of a systematic review are reported transparently and completely. This includes describing the search strategy, the criteria for selecting studies, the method for data extraction, and the assessment of study quality. One important point is that PRISMA does not provide specific instructions on how to conduct the systematic review itself. It does not include detailed steps for what databases to select or how to analyze the data. These tasks fall under the methodology of the systematic review and are a bit dependent on your field. Therefore, you need to come up with your own analysis method and just combine it with PRISMA. However, PRISMA guides you through the systematic search process step by step and ensures you document all of it thoroughly. The main goals of PRISMA are transparency, ensuring that your search is clearly and rigorously described so that other researchers can replicate and verify your study. Completeness, all relevant information must be reported to give readers a full picture of your literature search. And comparability. By standardizing the reporting, it becomes easier to compare and evaluate different systematic reviews. The PRISMA project also has its own homepage where you find all sorts of resources. You find the link in the video description. When following the PRISMA guidelines, always make sure to cite the original source that contains the most recent version of the guide. The current version is called PRISMA 2020. The complete reference is shown on the screen right now. The PRISMA flowchart, also sometimes called the PRISMA diagram, is a chart that shows how studies are selected for a systematic review. It consists of four main phases. First, identification. You search databases and other sources for studies and record the total number of studies found. Two, screening. You review the titles and abstracts of the studies and filter out those that are not relevant. Three, eligibility. You now read the full text of the remaining studies and exclude those that do not fit your criteria. And four, inclusion. The final group of studies that will be included in your literature review or meta-analysis remains. The PRISMA diagram helps you document the selection process clearly and ensures that nothing important is overlooked. In the methods section of your study, you should mention that your review followed the PRISMA guide and then you provide your own flowchart with your own numbers. I'll show you how this looks like in a minute. By explicitly mentioning PRISMA in the methods section, you ensure that readers recognize and hopefully appreciate the structured approach of your systematic review. Here are a few simple steps to implement the PRISMA literature search in your own work. So first start with research. Search multiple databases such as PubMed or Scopus for relevant studies, depending on what discipline you're in. Make a note of how and where you searched. Study selection. Review the studies and remove those that don't fit your criteria. Use the PRISMA diagram to document this process but be aware that you need to develop your own selection criteria. Data extraction. Gather key information from the selected studies, such as sample size, methods, and results. What exactly you extract depends on what you're investigating, so the research question of your review. Then study quality assessment. Assess the quality of the studies to ensure they are reliable and make a decision if they still should be included. Now before we get to a concrete example, please consider giving this video a like if you are enjoying this content. It will really help me out a lot. 
Now to show you how Prisma works in practice, let's take a look at a paper that followed the Prisma guide. The systematic review by Helen Crompton and Diane Burke, Artificial Intelligence in Higher Education, the state of the field, has done this really well. The Prisma guide were used in the study to make the process of the review transparent and complete. Identification. The researchers conducted a literature search across several databases, identifying 341 relevant studies. Additionally, they conducted a manual search, finding 34 more studies. A manual search means that the researchers independently searched specific journals, reference lists, search engines and websites in addition to the automated database search to ensure that no relevant studies were overlooked. Four duplicate studies were removed in this phase. Screening. After removing duplicates, 371 articles remained. After reviewing the titles and abstracts, no articles were excluded. So all 371 proceeded to the full text screening. Eligibility. The remaining articles were read in full and then assessed. Some studies were excluded for the following reasons. No original research. 68 articles were not original studies, but rather reviews themselves or commentaries. Not in the field of higher education. 55 studies were not related to the field the authors were interested in. No artificial intelligence. 92 studies did not deal with AI. No use of AI for educational purposes. In 18 studies, AI was not used for educational purposes. Inclusion. Finally, 138 articles were included in the systematic review. These articles were analyzed in detail and qualitatively coded to answer the study's research question. You just need to fill out the Prisma flowchart with the results of your literature search and screening and you can include it in the method section of your paper as a figure. Super easy, right? In addition, Prisma offers further resources such as a checklist, which you can find on the Prisma website. It consists of 27 items that are divided into different sections. This checklist is relevant for you if you are preparing a full systematic review as part of your thesis or a research paper. Here's a brief summary for you. Title and abstract clearly state that this is a systematic review and provide a brief overview of the work. Introduction. Describe the background and reasons for the review. Clearly state the review's objectives and questions. Methods. Set the inclusion and exclusion criteria for studies. Detail the information sources and search strategies. Explain the selection and data extraction process. Specify methods for assessing risk of bias and measures of effect. Describe how data from different studies were combined and analyzed. Results. Document the results of the search and selection process, ideally with a flow diagram. Present the characteristics and findings of the included studies. Assess the risk of bias and certainty of the results. Discussion. Interpret the findings in the context of other evidence. Discuss the limitations of the evidence and methods. Consider the implications for practice and future research. And additional information. Provide information on the re registration and protocol of the review. List sources of financial and non-financial support. Disclose any potential conflicts of interest among the authors. And indicate the availability of data and materials. Other Prisma resources are only relevant if you plan to publish your research at a very high level or conduct complex meta-analyses. If you are a student, the diagram and the checklist are most relevant. And now if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment.